Hello students, welcome to AIMS India online classes. This is a chemistry session. Here we are going to discuss about elements and their classification. Nowadays we observe in our school or in the lab modern periodic table. But it was not the first classification. Before that, scientists they have tried to classify the elements in different ways. So those we are going to learn in this class about earlier attempts for the classification of elements and before that let us introduction part of this chapter about what are elements why to be classified what are the advantages of uh, uh, classific by classification of elements these are all points we are going to see in this session matter is classified into solids liquids and gases isn't it we have studied about this in earlier classes matter is classified into three major states they are solids liquids and gases this is based upon the arrangement of molecules in the matter based on the arrangement of particles inside the matter it is classified into three types however this is not the only way of classification of matter matter is classified into compounds mixtures based upon the composition also okay not only based upon the arrangement of particles inside the matter this matter is also classified based upon the chemical composition so based upon the chemical components present in the matter it is classified into pure and impure substances nothing but elements compounds and mixtures so we know elements means they may contain only one kind of atoms in them compounds will be containing particles which are containing atoms of different elements combined together those we call as compounds and different kinds of elements and compounds if they mix all together then it is said to be mixtures so in this way matter is also classified into another way that is elements compounds and mixtures based upon the chemical composition so the first one you can say physical composition that is based upon the arrangement of molecules or particles inside the matter we know <clears throat> gases uh, particles are very loosely packed in liquids uh, particles are tightly packed and in the solids particles are very tightly packed with compact size isn't it so this is based upon the arrangement of particles inside the matter and next one this is uh, another classification of matter based upon the chemical composition based upon the type of particles existing in the matter it is classified into two types those are pure substances and impure substances these pure substances again classified into two types elements and compounds and another kind of another kind of particles is mixtures so these are the two types of classifications of matter which we have studied in the earlier classes so in order to understand the elements let us consider examples of substances like uh, iron silver etc so if we take these are examples which we come across in our day to day life isn't it we observe these often in our homes also so here iron is made up of iron atoms in the same way silver is made up of silver atoms so all these are said to be elements so now we can define an element as the pure substance which is containing only one kind of atoms in it so now here we are telling iron is an element because if you see in iron substance there will be only one kind of atoms those we call iron atoms only one kind of atoms are found inside the iron so iron is said to be an element because element is defined as the substance which is containing only one kind of atoms in it okay so chemists have discovered 118 elements so far isn't it so the modern periodic table contains nowadays what we see in our schools or in the books that is filled with uh, total 118 elements because scientists they have discovered so far 118 elements out of these 118 elements 92 elements are normal elements and the remaining are synthetic elements 
synthetic elements means uh, man made elements the elements prepared in the laboratory by the human beings from the already existing elements these are being prepared that is why these are called synthetic elements 92 are normally existing elements in the nature now let us see the characteristics of these elements what properties they possess an element is a pure substance made up of only one kind of atoms this is a major property of elements based upon which they are defined the substances which are made up of only one kind of atoms are called elements if you see copper material in that all will be there only one kind of atoms which we call as copper atoms and another element if you see carbon like coal or diamond whatever it is which is made up of carbon it also contains only carbon atoms if you see another gas like helium it also will be made up of the only helium atoms in this way the substance which is made up of only one kind of atoms is known as an element and an atom is the smallest unit of an element it possesses the properties of that element so this is the smallest part of an element which can exhibit or possess the properties of that uh, element so if you see the properties of this single atom of copper the same properties will be possessed by this copper material so it is the smallest unit of an element which possesses the properties of that element okay elements may occur in the free state in the nature or found in the form of their compounds yes out of these one 18 elements what we have known some elements they exist in the free state in the nature like uh, helium oxygen nitrogen these are all the gases present in the free state in the atmospheric air isn't it and uh, some elements they exist in the compound state also means two three elements they combine chemically and they form new substances called compounds so some elements they exist in the free state and some they exist in the compound state in the combined state with other elements some elements can be prepared artificially by the nuclear reactions no worry about these nuclear reactions we are going to study in detail in the further classes actually here the nuclear reactions means in these reactions a bigger atom will be split it into two or more smaller atoms so by splitting this nucleus into two smaller pieces two new atoms will be or two new elements will be formed there such kind of reaction is called nuclear reaction in some other nuclear reactions two three smaller atoms they combine together to form a bigger atom in the reverse way to this so these all reactions in which a nucleus involved are called nuclear reactions so in these reactions sometimes bigger nuclei splits into smaller nuclei and in some chemical uh, nuclear reactions smaller nuclei means smaller elements they combine together to form a bigger element new element so in this way some elements are being prepared artificially by these reactions which we call as nuclear reactions because in these reactions nucleus is involved so in general in almost all the chemical reactions only electrons will be involved but in these reactions nucleus is being changed bigger nuclei splits into smaller nuclei and often smaller nuclei one or two they may combine together to form a bigger nuclei nuclei this is new element so these reactions are called nuclear reactions so so the elements formed created in these reactions are called synthetic elements or artificial elements okay the properties of different elements are different this is because the arrangement of electrons and atoms are different yes so uh, there are 118 elements in the periodic table or the elements which are discussed so far so the elements are being different from one to another in their properties so the difference for these properties is the major reason for this is uh, the arrangement of electrons are in those atoms are being different from one to another arrangement in the sense we call that electronic configuration electronic configurations are being 
different from element to element because of this difference in the electronic configuration they possess different properties okay now let us see what are the necessities for the classification of these elements why to classify these elements into different batches let us see those here in the beginning of 18th century only few elements were known and hence it was easy to remember the properties of these elements individually if there are only few elements we can remember them very easily their properties and what kind of compounds they form how do they behave in the chemical reactions these all can be remembered if there are less number of elements if the number of uh, elements count is less we can remember those properties individually easily but by the discovery of new elements which is presently about 118 elements isn't it so it became very difficult to remember their properties individually so as there are so many number of elements the remembrance of the properties and behavior of each and every element separately and individually became very difficult that is why they have started to classify these elements into different batches there each batch contain same type of elements means the elements which behave in the similar manner by that they are able to remember the properties for each batch separately it became a little easy that is one of the necessity for the classification of elements and another way thus it was felt the need of some simple method to simplify and systematize the study of properties of various elements and their compounds so because of this reason as it became huge number of elements the remembrance of uh, uh, properties and behavior of each and every element individually became difficult so to overcome this difficulty they have started to classify the elements into different groups and batches to make uh, the study of properties of various elements and their compounds easy so this necessity led to the classification of elements into various groups okay now let us see here the advantages of classification of elements so we have seen now what is the necessity for the classification of elements so by the classification what kind of advantages are there so how it became easy to remember the properties let us see here so to study the elements in a systematic manner so the classification made easy to remember this and to correlate the properties of elements so by the classification we can correlate the properties of one element with another element so the elements which are kept as one batch they may have similar chemical properties and to know the type of different compounds that different elements can form this all can be known by the classification now let us see the earlier classifications of elements modern science world is knowing information about 118 elements and have a periodic table which was prepared by henry mosley which makes the study more easy isn't it i think you have seen this periodic table in your books or in your school this we call as modern periodic table or which is also called mosley periodic table because it was uh, prepared by henry mosley but before the appearance of this modern periodic table there were many attempts that deserve respect because it was not the first classification and first periodic table before him so many scientists they have tried to classify the elements to observe the properties of elements but they were failed of course because of some defects and drawbacks in those but they deserve respect because from those uh, earlier attempts only this modern periodic table was uh, derived from the drawbacks of those uh, attempts only this was developed so we need to know about those earlier attempts also now let us see some important earlier attempts done for the classification of various elements one among those is uh, lavoisier's classification into metals and non metals many scientists and chemists they have tried to attempt to classify the elements into a logical way the first and most apparent one was 
to classify all the elements into metals and non-metals. So at the earlier days, while trying to class with the elements for the first time, they have tried to class with elements as metals and non-metals. By the late 1860s, more than 60 chemical elements had been identified. Based on similar physical and chemical properties, Lavoisier and early chemists, they have classified the elements into metals and non-metals. So they have tried to classify these all known elements by the time, around 60 elements into metals and non-metals. So out of those, let us see first about metals, how they have classified certain elements into metals. So an element is a metal if it is uh, having these uh, properties. So based upon certain properties, those known elements by the time around 60 elements, they have classified those into two categories. They are metals and mat non-metals. So what are those properties? Let us see here. So on which basis certain elements are classified into metals. So to be a metal, what properties should it process? Those are one of them is uh, it is solid at room temperature. It is observed most of the metals, almost all the metals are hard solids at room temperature. So those elements are being in the solid hard solid state are classified as metals. Another property is uh, it is uh, lustrous. That means it has a shining property on their surface. Almost all the metals they are having shiny surfaces. That shining property is called lustrous property. Metals are lustrous. It is ductile. That means it can be drawn into wires. We know metals can be drawn into very thin wires. For example, if you see copper, copper can be drawn into very thin wire. Isn't it? This property of metals by which they can be drawn into thin wires is called ductility. So metals are ductile. Another property is uh, it is malleable. Means it can be beaten into thin sheets. Metals can be beaten into very thin sheets. This property by which metals can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability. So metals are malleable. And it is a good conductor of heat and electricity means metals can pass heat and electricity through them. This is a, here you see another simple experiment it is shown here by which you can prove as metals are good conductors of electricity. If a metal sheet is uh, inserted in the electric circuit, so bulb will be glowing because of the passage of electricity through this metallic sheet. So from this it we can be told metals are good conductors of heat and electricity and it has a tendency to lose one or more electrons so generally metals they lose one or more electrons from them so these are the properties of metals based upon these properties certain elements are classified as metals but certain elements are there being metals with uh, exceptions of one or more properties from these let us see what are those exceptions one among them is um, metals like sodium, potassium, lithium. These are soft metals. They can be cut with a knife even. They are soft enough. But they are uh, possessing remaining properties as it is just like the other metals. But uh, they are not being hard enough as remaining elements. These are soft metals. Even they can be cut with a knife also. And one more exception is element mercury. Mercury is a liquid metal at room temperature. Just above the room temperature, one more metal will come into liquid state that is gallium. But whereas remaining all metals are solids at room temperature, only mercury is a liquid metal. But just by above 30 degrees Celsius, another element gallium also will come into liquid state which are having which is having low melting point except these two remaining all elements are having solid state at room temperature another exception is uh, another metal zinc it is a 
not malleable on ductile what does it mean zinc cannot be drawn into thin wires and it cannot be beaten into thin sheets it is non malleable or non ductile but a metal so these we can say as exceptions okay now let us say about non metals so which elements are classified as non metals an element is a non metal if it has the following properties like this one among them is a, it is a brittle solid or a liquid or a gas okay generally non metals are brittle solids liquids or gases at normal temperatures we used here brittle solid what does it mean by brittle the solid which breaks up into smaller pieces on beating is called brittle solid for example if you see well known example in our homes rock salt if you take the rock piece of uh, salt it if you touch it it will be hard enough but if you throw it on the floor it breaks up into smaller pieces very easily isn't it that nature of uh, a solid which breaks up into smaller pieces by beating with an object is called brittle nature so some of the non metals are solids but they are brittle nature say some are shown here coal in the form of carbon in the form of coal it will be hard enough you touch it if you throw it down when it hits the floor it breaks up into smaller pieces very easily that nature is called brittle nature okay this is one of the properties and next it has no luster means non metals are non lustrous they don't have any shining surfaces another one is it is not ductile means it cannot be drawn into wires non metals are non ductile they cannot be drawn into wires next it is not malleable what does it mean here non metals cannot be beaten into sheets by hitting with objects they cannot be beaten into sheets they are not non malleable and next non metals are bad conductors of heat and electricity they cannot pass electricity or heat through them so they are bad conductors and it has a tendency to gain one or more electrons okay now generally non metals they accept electrons from others they gain one or more electrons so the elements which possess these properties are considered as non metals okay and in this also there are some exceptions just like the metals here in the non metals also there are some exceptions which do not possess one or more pro from properties from this but they are non metals for example carbon in the form of diamond so even though it is a diamond and platinum sorry in the form of diamond and graphite even though it is made up of non metal it will be having lustrous property it possesses lustrous property means they have shiny surfaces whereas remaining all non metals they do not possess this property diamond or graphite which are made up of carbon which is a non metal even though it is made up of non metal they possess this lustrous property means they have shiny surfaces you know diamond will be very glitter isn't it so this is one exception we can say and one more we are telling here these are bad conductors of heat and electricity but one of the non metals it is said to be graphite which is made up of carbon graphite is one of the best conductors of electricity but here graphite is made up of carbon which is a non metal generally non metals are bad conductors of electricity but exception is here graphite okay this is a classification of elements into metals and non metals but it was rejected now let us see here the reasons for the rejection of this classification of elements into metals or non metals so main reason is the elements were divided into only two broad categories which it does not help much in the study of elements isn't it more all the metals are categorized into one one group 
in that group there will be some highly reactive metals um, some less reactive metals are there and some least reactive metals are there but those all are categorized into one as metals so this does not help much in uh, understanding the properties of those elements individually so this is one of the drawbacks in that another one is there are some other elements which have properties of metals and non metals such elements are known as metalloids so not only two categories actually there are some other elements also which possess both properties of both metals and non metals so for such kind of elements there is no categorization in this classification so this is also one of the reason for the rejection of this classification so those elements which pro possess the properties of both metals and non metals are called metalloids here are some examples for the metalloids boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony means strontium tellurium polonium and astatin these all elements they can possess the properties of both metals and non metals these elements are called metalloids there is no categorization for these kind of elements which was done by lavoisier so that classification was later rejected okay thank you for watching our video please subscribe our youtube channel aims today and visit our website aims today.in for latest updates on recorded videos